Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about Australia's progression towards a cashless society. So first of all, in the upcoming months there's going to be this thing called the New Payments Platform. So what is the New Payments Platform? The New Payments Platform is a world-class payments infrastructure for the Australian economy. It gives consumers, businesses and government departments a platform to make fast, versatile and data-rich payments to meet the evolving needs of a 24-7 digital economy. It's a platform that enables real-time and settlement for simple or complex payment solutions between two people or between many. It can simplify payments through an addressing service as well as, sorry, as well offer the ability to include more information with payments such as text or links to externally hosted documents. Okay, so who is involved in this? Uh, the initial NPP participants of the new payments platform are ANZ, uh, ASL, Bendigo and Adelaide Bank, Citigroup, Commonwealth Bank, Cuskell, Cuskell, whatever they are, HSBC, Indu, ING Direct, Macquarie Bank, NAB, the RBA and Westpac. Now there'll be this thing called the PayID which works with the new payments platform. So what is a PayID? PayID makes payments simple as and on this lady's hand, forget your BSB and account number. Remembering your account details isn't easy. When it comes to remembering bank account details like your BSB and account number, most people simply can't. With all the numbers and passwords in our lives, these numbers are all too easily forgotten. That's where a Pay ID can help. Many of Australia's banks, credit unions and building societies have developed Pay ID, a simple new service that makes sending and receiving payments a little bit easier. Your Pay ID can be something you already know that's easy to remember, like your mobile phone number or even your email address. You can simply register it with a participating bank, building society or credit union in your usual online and mobile banking, and they'll link it to your account. Uh, then when someone needs to pay you, you just give them your Pay ID. Simple as. So what's better about Pay ID? Pay ID and faster payments. Pay ID is designed to make life just that little bit simpler and will work seamlessly with the new OSCO by BPay service. You'll be able to make and receive payments faster than ever before, 24-7 via your usual online and mobile banking. Pay the right person. When you use a Pay ID with a service like OSCO, the name of the person who owns that Pay ID is shown immediately before you approve the payment. Then all you have to do is simply confirm it's the right person. So currently with the BSB account number system, if you pay somebody and you make a mistake in that account number, it goes to the wrong account holder. You pay the wrong person. It's very error prone, but this Pay ID seems to clear that up. Okay, let's look at some frequently asked questions. Um, when will Pay ID be available? Pay ID will roll out from early 2018. Your bank, credit union or building society will contact you to let you know when you can create a Pay ID in your usual online and mobile banking. Okay, and who will support Pay ID? We expect more than 60 to 70 banks, credit unions and building societies will offer Pay ID to their con to their customers in early 2018, with more joining later in the year. So it sounds like every single bank will be using this. If they don't, they'll be falling behind. I found an article, uh, Is Australia on the Brink of Becoming a Completely Cashless Society? It was written in March this year. Uh, the Reserve Bank is introducing new technology this year, the NPP, which will push Australia even further towards being a cashless society. Later this year, the bank will roll out a new system called the New Payment Platform. The NPP will mean money can be transferred almost instantaneously, even when the, pay, sorry, the payer and payee are members of different banks. The technology will also support overlay services, meaning banks will be able to create their own payment services to entice customers. Okay, um, cashless life a win for government. Reserve Bank figures have shown that ATM withdrawals peaked in 2009-10 and have been on the slide ever since. According to the Australian Payments Association, more than three out of four face-to-face -face payments are now estimated to be tap and go. Professor Holden said there were huge advantages to a cashless society, especially for governments. The reason to do it is that it's estimated that somewhere between about $3.5 and $5 billion in Australia every year is lost in tax revenue due to the sort of cash economy, he said. It's like someone saying, I just did that job for you. If you pay me cash, it's $140. If you want a receipt, it's going to be more, and so on. Um, let's go have a look at another article. Australian cities among world leaders in cashless transactions visa report. 
So Australian cities are among the most advanced in the world in dumping cash in favour of digital payments, helped by a surge in tap-and-go purchases, according to new research. As banks also report cash withdrawals falling quickly, a report from payments giant Visa put Sydney and Canberra among a group of nine cities leading the charge in embracing digital payments. So if we just scroll down here, we can see a table, Australian cities embrace digital payments. Visa's research categorised 100 world cities according to their progress in adopting electronic payments. Australian cities were among nine digital leaders. So digital leaders include Sydney, Canberra, Stockholm, London, Auckland. Then you go through these other cities, uh, cash-centric cities such as Lagos, Beirut, Phnom Penh, Cairo and Hanoi. RBA figures also show that in the past nine years, the share of consumer payments by number paid for in cash has dropped from nearly 70% to less than 40%. Visa's Mr. Carpen said paying with a phone would take off, though this shift is happening only gradually so far. Yes, that's what I've noticed too. Um, because we have tap and go with our credit card or the debit card or whatever, uh, very few people I found, at least in my circle of friends, are using payments with their phones. Next, shopping centres prepare to go cashless as ATMs disappear. The cashless society is here and shopping centre landlords and tenants are now bracing themselves for the next phase, the exit of ATMs from malls. Although the concept might be daunting, less cash will pay off in the long run. There will be advantages for shopping centres and also individual brands in terms of tracking spending and also identifying trends in real time. For retailers, the opportunity in the digital era to track big data will enable them to identify consumers' needs and wants in real time, something that is more important than ever before. Yeah, so there's also this uh, issue, I guess, of tracking data, big data. It's a very common thing now, isn't it, with Facebook and so on. They want to know what we're doing so that they can better tailor advertising and products towards, towards us. Some kids' news. This directly affects me. Thousands of school canteens adopt cashless technology. Canteens are going cashless in schools across Australia as technology changes the way we interact with money. But it's not just tuck shops changing. With rapid technological developments, meaning we can now pay for things with a tap of a phone, watch or plastic card, an overall increase in the use of this technology played a significant role in the move away from cash, said ING Executive Director John Arnott, after ING surveyed Australians on their payment behaviours. Many of us get our news from our phones, we set up appointments, we order dinner on the way home and do our banking and shopping on our phones. Mr Arnott said a year ago you would see very few people using their smartphone to pay at a cafe, but today it's rapidly becoming commonplace. Australia got its first ATM only 40 years ago, and in a relatively short space of time we've been given so much more choice in how and when we make payments. It's amazing, isn't it? 40, only 40 years ago we had our first ATM. And now we're doing away with them almost. Now let's look at some arguments against a cashless society. So here's an article from June this year. Why a cashless society would hurt the poor, a lesson from India. India recently tried to reduce the use of cash in its economy by eliminating overnight two of its most widely used bills in what was called demonetization. While the effort, initially explained as an attempt to curb black money, has been a failure in many respects, it was part of an ongoing and global push toward cashlessness. What India and other governments have failed to contend with, however, is that is the adverse effect such severe policies have on the poor, who seldom use banks. India's working poor rely almost exclusively on cash, with about 97% of all transactions involving an exchange of rupees. Okay, so from the perspective of a poor country, or where many, there are many poor people, cashlessness is not necessarily a good thing. Although Australia, I wouldn't classify as being in the same boat as India, because most people have a bank account here, if not all people. And just one more, how Australia's move to a cashless society is damaging millennials. This was written this month. An Australian fintech founder claims that the move towards a cashless society is harming consumers, especially millennials who lose track of how much they're spending. Co-founder of Sydney startup Carrots Money, Jacqueline Park, 
says not physically handling money makes it too easy to spend excessively. Things like contactless pay and afterpay are making spending money really, really easy. We're removing money from the physical world. We're harming our long-term freedom," she told the Intersect conference last month. Visa recently revealed that contactless payments have now reached an all-time high in Australia, with 92% of its face-to-face -face transactions via that method. The credit card company also reported that two Australian cities, Sydney and Canberra, the only ones covered in the global research, are ahead of New York, San Francisco, Singapore and Berlin in the adoption of electronic payments. Park's theory that the cashless trend is harming consumers is supported by a University of Sydney study this year, showing people spend up to 50% more when they don't use cash. There's good empirical evidence that people spend more money when they don't actually have to use cash, and that goes across different alternative forms of payment," Sydney University Professor of Marketing and Behavioural Psychology Donald Briley told Fairfax at the time. So yes, there is a psychological element at play here. Obviously the government don't mind. They want people to spend more cash, don't they, to improve the economy. From the individual perspective, uh, spending too much cash, especially for our youth, isn't really a good thing. Okay, so what do you think about the rise of the cashless society? Is it a good thing? Is it going to benefit our economy and help everybody uh, set up business and so on? Or do you think it's a bad thing and we should stick to using cash and get rid of all these contactless cards and so on? I think ultimately we won't have a choice, will we? Anyway, leave your comments in the comment section below and thank you for listening.